I'm in quite good mood today, but that is besides the point. A question I get asked a lot is, how do I use an image in mid-journey? And this is the 30 second version. I'm gonna to go to the Guardian website, which is here. They have a photo essay about truckers in America. And I'm gonna grab this image, I'm gonna open it into a new tab. And I'm just gonna grab the URL here, copy over to Discord. I type in imagine and paste the image URL in. And that's pretty much done. Now Midjourney is going to use that image, but there's a bit more to it than that. Because Midjourney is a cloud-based server, for it to be able to see your images to use them, your images have to be somewhere publicly available on the internet. Now, this is how I do it, uh, which is with Discord. And because I pay for Midjourney, I actually have access to the Midjourney bot in DMs. But if you don't do that, then like make a channel, chat to a friend in DMs, do something on Discord, it's probably where you're gonna be. And I'll show you on the phone. I'm in Discord. All I do is I hit the plus button down here. I find an image that I want to use or more than one images. So I've got this lovely image that I painted earlier and a picture from the truckers and I'm uploading them. Now I have a really slow internet here at the studio. So this is gonna take a little bit of a while, but once it's up, I have them here. Simply click on it once, hold, copy, and now you have the URL. So if I imagine and then paste, I can now use that image and it will do something with it. Now we're gonna do the same again on the desktop of Discord. So I'll show you again over here. So once more, I'm pressing the plus button. I'm finding a couple of images, my lovely art, and then this trucker, opening them, sending them up. Again, the internet is really slow here in the studio. They've uploaded. Now if I click on one of them, you'll see it says open original at the bottom. Click on that. Now I have the URL and I can imagine with that URL and it's gonna do things with it. And I'll get onto that because it may not do what you expect. But first, I'm going to show you a couple of other things that will probably help you and then I'll get onto the explanation about why it's not going to do probably what you want it to do. There's a car behind me. So the thing that I'm gonna show you is using image weight, which is telling the system how much to rely on the image you've given it and how much to rely on the words that you fed it to generate its final thing. And to do that, we're also gonna use another thing called a seed, which is just telling it to try to do the same thing over and over again. Because if I type in like Rizzo print, imagine, Rizzo print and I get a result and then I type in Rizzo print again I'll get a different set of results and a different set of results. If I add a seed number to it I'll get similar results um, each time so it's not straying too far away. So now I'm going to go to Discord where I uploaded this beautiful piece of art I created earlier. I'm going to open the original, grab the URL, go back to Discord and I'm going to say Imagine that Rizzo print, and I'm going to put the seed in again. Now it's going to generate me that image and the phrase Rizzo print. But if I do it again with image weighting, So now what I've done is I've taken the original image that I just drew and then the Rizzo print and then asked it to blend those two together with its default value of 0 0.75 and then also 0 0.5, 1, 2 and 4 and then we can get these different results. So hopefully now you can see up there the difference of the image weighting. But to show you that it works in a different way as well, if we take the trucker and we do the same thing again, so I have the trucker here, and then default Rizzo 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 4, again along at the bottom. And you can now see that the image you fed at the beginning does actually have an effect on the final output, although the image isn't necessarily represented particularly well in the final output. 
but also we can do other things. So here is my original amazing artwork as an oil painting, and then the lady in the diner as an oil painting again. But if we feed in both of those URLs, we get both of them combined. So this is my artwork, and the lady in the diner is using both of those images together with an oil painting to get this other result. So why do I keep saying it may not give you what you expect? I mean, I don't know how you're using it. I use it as this inspiration machine that I can put things into when I want to bounce ideas around. But if you wanted to put an image in there and then have it paint that image in a different style, like literally like a Roy Lichtenstein picture or an Andy Warhol or something like that, it won't quite do that because Midjourney is an AI system. It's a machine learning system that's been trained on images with words next to them. So it's been given lots of pictures of frogs with frog written underneath, frog, 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 frog. So when you type in the text frog, it tries to make something that looks like the frogs. If you put in lots of hats, it knows what hats look like and you give it the text hat, it tries to make a hat. So when you give it the text frog in a hat, it will try to give you something that is both frog and hat-like. So it's a system that takes words and turns them into images. When you just give it an image, it doesn't really know what that is. It has a sort of idea, it can kind of match it up a little bit, but that's not what the system is designed to do. There are other systems like StyleGAN, which you actually give it a picture and say, can you give this to me and then do it in the style of Picasso or do it in the style of Monet? And that's, that's a style transfer machine learning system. Midjourney isn't one of those. It'll give it a go. It'll take your image and it'll do something with it, but you'll probably lose your original image quite a lot in, in it. So once again, using the right machine learning system for the job, Midjourney, DALI, Disco Diffusion for generating images from text, um, Topaz AI from the last video for scaling things up in a smart way, and StyleGans to actually transfer a style from one place to another. So that's how you use your images in Midjourney. Normally I'd be talking about pen plotters and I have those videos still to come, but if you're interested in machine learning or generative art, I kind of cover that as well and also just what I'm doing in the art studio here. So if you like that type of thing, subscribe. If not, that's cool. I hope this was useful and I will see you next time.